Good morning, world. Good morning, all nations, all people, all tongue. Good morning to every man, woman, boy, and girl living and breathing in the face of this earth. I pray that this new year is starting out great for everyone and God's protection and blessing is with everyone living and breathing in the face of this earth. Today, I will be reading from Ephesians chapter 6. This is what the Holy Spirit has given me to read this morning, and I pray that you will be encouraged by the message. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. When you have people that are being mean to you or not speaking to you or lying on you or doing all sorts of things concerning you. It's not flesh and blood that's doing it because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We are human beings. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we're learning how to live as spiritual beings. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the things that we are wrestling against, demons in all these spaces. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that I bind the principalities, the powers. I bind the rulers of darkness of this world. I bind the spirit of wick, spirit of wickedness in high places in the name of Jesus. I bind them and I loose the ministering angels of Jesus Christ to take all of their places and spaces that they are assigned to. So when they come to dwell there, they will find that the spaces are full with God's power anointing and ministering angels and they can't come in. And we have to pray one for another because of these demonic spirits that we're wrestling with. Wickedness in high places, our government, the demonic spirits are encamp encamped all about the government. So we have to pray for our government leaders, our leaders, our presidents, all the people that hold offices everywhere. We are responsible for praying for them. Prayer changes things. We can bind the demonic spirits and loose the ministering angels. It says in the Bible, what we bind in earth will be bound in heaven. What we loose in earth will be loosed in heaven. We have power. Those of us that are in Christ Jesus, we have the power of Jesus. Verse 11, 13, verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. We have to put on the whole armor of God. Where is the battlefield? It's in our mind because that's where Satan comes to challenge us, to tempt us. And we have a choice either to entertain what he's saying or cast it down, casting down imaginations and every high thing that is out itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ Jesus. We have that power because Jesus gave us his power when we accepted him as Lord and Savior. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We have to put on the armor so that we can take a stand, a stand against all the terrible things that's going on in the world. Take a stand and put the word of God on it. 
Talk to God about it. And he will tell you what he wants to tell you concerning what's going on in the world. He will share with you. We all in the body of Christ have special talents, special gifts, special anointings. We all need one another. The thumb needs the toe. The knee, the knee needs the shoulder. The eyes need the ears. This body is one unit. The body of Jesus Christ is one unit. We are not separated. There may be many denominations, but the body of Christ is not separated. In those denominations are fingers and toes and eyes and nose and mouth and ears and feet and hands. and The body of Christ is in many other denominations. We all are one body. We have to take a stand as one body. In the evil day, no matter what come upon us in the world, we have to take a stand. All nations, all people, all tongues, every man, woman, boy, and girl, we have to take a stand in Christ Jesus, those who belong to Christ Jesus. We ought to pray for those who do not belong to Christ Jesus so that they will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We are to be examples, ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Stand therefore, having your loins girt with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. On a job, when you're on your job, you're supposed to take a stand for Jesus Christ so your co-workers can see and know that Jesus Christ lives in you. And they want to share in that because they see the blessing of God in your life. Speak the truth. Having on the right breastplate of righteousness, doing the right thing doing what is right when nobody else is looking, doing what is right because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit sees all things. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We are to be peacemakers, ambassadors of Jesus Christ, to be peacemakers, to seek peace, to be peaceful, we are to live as peaceably as possible with every man, woman, boy, and girl. This is a command from Jesus Christ. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. When we think of a shield, we're thinking of uh, holding a shield in our hand. But no, the shield is in our mind. The shield is in our thoughts. The shield is coming out of our mouth when we speak by faith. The things that are godly are going to come to pass. We're waiting. We're speaking by faith. We're believing for what we don't see. The shield of faith. And every time the enemy throws something in our mind negative, about what we're waiting for, then we throw the word of God right back at him, the shield of faith. And we keep believing and receiving and walking in that belief. That's how we're quenching the fiery darts of the devil, by throwing it right back in his face. The word of God, throwing the word of God back in his face and believing and receiving what we're waiting for and acting on it by giving God praise and talking about it and letting people know it will come to pass. No matter how long I have to wait, it will come to pass. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. Taking the shield of faith. One time I was living in uh, Norfolk, Virginia when I was in the, in the military. And um, my brother, he lived in a house in a nice neighborhood. 
And every time I would leave his house, I would see these condominiums. And I used to tell my brother, every time I rode past those condominiums, I'm going to live there. I'm going to live there. And it, maybe a year, I think a year passed by and some months. And all of a sudden, I seen one of the condominiums was for rent. And sure enough, God blessed me and my husband to move into that condominium. Because I took my faith and I, I put my faith out there. And I didn't take it off the field. So I believed for that condominium. There's another time when my mother was in the hospital and she had tubes going all through her and she was in intensive care. So me and two of my other siblings uh, was in a hotel, went to, uh, got a hotel room and we fasted and prayed for her for three days. And we believed that God was going to heal her and bring her out. And he did, he did. He healed her, he brought her home, she was well, she was healthy, and she just kept right on serving God. And she began to go to the uh, children's ward and minister to the children in the different hospitals. God is a good God. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. See, it takes faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Satan, you will not, you will not rule over our lives. You have no power. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Taking the helmet of salvation Guess what? When people see motorcycle people riding with helmets on, that's one of the first thing you notice is the helmet. Well, the motorcycle is first, and then you notice what they're wearing, the helmets. Helmet of salvation. When people see us with the helmet of salvation, they know that we belong to Jesus Christ and that the light of Jesus is shining through us. The sword is the word of God. When we think about the sword, we think about holding it in our hand, but our sword is in our mouth, bringing the word of God to the situation, to the circumstance, to the healing of the body, to the healing of the mind, to the mental, mental stability, the word of God. We have to keep reading the word of God every single day. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We have to pray daily for all saints, for all those in the body of Christ. We have to pray continuously. Satan is here to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan is here to steal, kill, and destroy. He first got to steal the word from you. Then he wants to kill you mentally. Then he wants to destroy you and your family. He wants to kill you by taking the word from you, by getting you to go into a backslidden state. And then he wants to destroy your family and turn them from the ways of Jesus Christ. When we put on the whole armor, God has given us everything to protect us. Everything to protect us in the front. He didn't give us anything to protect us in the back because he didn't, don't expect us to run. He expect us to keep moving forward. Keep marching forward. Keep moving on. If you make a mistake, if you fall, ask for forgiveness. Pick yourself up. Dust yourself off and keep moving forward. Be encouraged this day. God has not given up on you. Don't give up on him. Oh, I've done so many bad things. Well, just ask God to forgive you for them. The moment you ask for forgiveness, he has put it in the sea of forgetfulness, and he never remembers it again because he looks at us through the blood of Jesus Christ and not at us, the flesh. So he never remembers it again, it's washed away. 
Now you can move on. You have a clean slate. If you find yourself in places where you don't want to be, but you continue to go there, then ask for deliverance. Ask God to deliver you completely, to move these people out of your lives, out of your way, to deliver you from whatever habit you may have, to deliver you from, from uh, health issues. And then once God give you the instructions, then you have to follow the instructions so your body can stay healed all the days of your life. The full armor. God protects us with the full armor of God. And he also protects us in Luke 10, 19. This is what God says. This is what God says to us. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, demons, and over all power of the enemy, the devil, Satan. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. God gives us power over the demonic spirits and powers over Satan. So today we tell you, Satan, to get under our feet. Demonic powers, we bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we loose the ministering angels of Jesus Christ. To go into the places and spaces that the demonic spirits are assigned to that when they get there they won't find the place empty they cannot come in they will find the ministering angels of God we cast you out Satan you have no authority over our lives you have to ask Jesus can you mess with us and Jesus says no and we say no so we can't open up the door for Satan to come in. We have to continuously read the word of God, apply it to our lives, encourage other people. It's important, it's our job to pray one for another, always, because this is what God commands for us to do. Prayer changes things and the world is going to be destroyed. We are their light. We are the light of the world. We have to show the world the way to Christ Jesus. We are different. We are peculiar people. We do things differently. Thank you for listening. God bless. Have a wonderful day and be encouraged. And if you are being encouraged by the videos, please tell someone else that so that they may also be encouraged by the videos. Have a wonderful day. Be good to yourself and someone else.